In a previous video, we talked about using the sun to expose your screen. What I want to do now is talk about all the lights that you can buy at a hardware store and why they are good or bad. All of our emulsions, whether it be dual cure, diesel, or photopolymer, they all require UV energy. And that UV energy is in the wavelength of 350 to 420 nanometer. All these emulsions are in that certain wavelength. As long as the wave is there, you can't expose the screen. As you can see here, I got a couple different waves from 300 to 400. And then we have another wave within a wave from, I want to say about 325 to 430 possibly, but it's a wave. As long as that wave fits into whatever you're trying to expose, it will expose your screen. By the way, anything over 420 nanometers, you can see. Anything under 420 nanometers is invisible to our eyes. That's why it's not important how bright it is, it's how much UV energy is being given off. Brightness has nothing to do with exposing the screen. Let's just start with mercury vapor. Mercury vapor is really good. It gives off a great deal of ultraviolet energy. Problem is, it's really hot. So hot, it can burn you. And then it can also burn a screen. So, not a great idea. Mercury vapor has a wavelength somewhere in a range of 350 to 420 nanometers, which is perfect to expose screens. 350 to 420 nanometers. However, if you go to a hardware store and say, I need a mercury vapor bulb, in the range of 350 to 420 nanometers. Know what they're going to say? Huh? What? They have no idea what that is. This relates to our industry. All they care about is a bulb that lights up the room. So a mercury vapor may work, but gives off a lot of heat. I would probably stay away from that. If, if you have to use it, fine. Let's go to photo flood. Photo flood is everywhere. Uh, as a matter of fact, this video, I got these photo flood lights on. They give off some UV, however, you never know how much UV there are photo flood. It can be a diazo based photo flood, they can be a, a LED exposure photo flood, all sorts of crazy things without knowing what they are. They can, like this is a flood light. Again, gives off a lot of light. No idea what the UV energy is. Might work, might not. Let's go to fluorescent lights. Fluorescent lights were used in our industry and still are uh, for years and years. They work relatively well. The wavelengths are right in the range of, again, 350 to 420 nanometer. But if you go to a hardware store or a home improvement center like, I don't know, uh, Home Depot, if you go into the light section, you'll find these. It's a fluorescent light. It's a pre this one's a premium cool light. Again, it's designed for lighting a room. What you need, if you're going to use a fluorescent light, is a light like this. Again, fluorescent light. It actually says 350 black light. That 350 is referring to that wavelength. This will work, and it'll work very well. Unfortunately, hardware stores are not going to have this. You're going to have to go to either Sylvania, and purchase it or go to a distributor that sells exposure units, then you can. Very expensive light bulb. Also, fluorescent lights lose energy very fast. The moment you turn it on, it starts to lose UV energy. It gets weaker and weaker and weaker. And if you use that exposure unit you're making a lot, Probably by the end of the year, you're going to have to replace all those bulbs because they've lost so much energy. And when one bulb burns out or loses a lot of energy <clears throat> in your exposure unit that you made, you have to replace all the bulbs, not just one, all of them. Because they're all giving off different amount of UV energy. They're all losing a little bit differently. Now let's go to halogen. Halogen is great for seeing things. It's really bright and it gives off a lot of heat. A halogen is something like a, uh, a work light. Those work lights are really bright, but they are really hot. They're dangerous. They give off a lot of heat. They can actually burn your screen and they can burn you. And they give off very little UV energy. This is a halogen bulb. 
I just touched it so I'm going to have to clean it before we put it into an exposure unit of any type because any any oils on your finger is going to hurt it. So, got that. Now let's go to metal halide. I'm sure you've done some research and you go, hey, metal halide, that's the one to use because that's what all the big guys use. Well, you know what? It's a different metal halide. This metal halide is that you're finding at any hardware store or lighting store. That metal halide is the bulb that's out in the parking lot. That great big bulb in the parking lot, or that great big bulb in a factory up in the ceiling. They're really bright, they give off a lot of light, and they give off a lot of UV energy. Unfortunately, they may not give off the right UV energy. What you want is a UV again of 350 to 420 nanometer. Now, professional metal halide looks something like this. This is a 5,000 watt metal halide lamp. Very expensive, very high intensity, and you have to be careful with this. Like I said, I don't want to touch that bulb at all with my fingers. If I get oils on there, it will burn out even faster. So, gotta be careful with it. So again, metal halide, I'm sure you heard of it. You're not gonna find that like at Home Depot. Ain't gonna happen. Let's do the grow lights. Grow lights, they're fantastic for growing plants. They do give off some UV energy and they will expose your screen, especially if your screens are made from a diazo-based product. All of these, except halogen, are going to give off some UV, just enough to expose a diazo-based product, like a pure diazo or a dual-cure diazo. But they're not designed for exposing exposure units. Let's go to flashlights. Now, I put flashlights on one for one reason. Flashlight, again, they can be really bright depending on what they're, well, how, how bright they are. The brighter they are, you can see better. They're designed for seeing in the dark. They're not designed for exposing screens. Again, none of these really are designed for exposing screens. Even though if you do some research and they say LED is the one you should be using for exposing the screen, not necessarily. Let's go to LED. I got a couple LED uh, here. Here's an LED. I don't even know what it's off of, but it's an LED. It may or may not work. Chances are it won't. It's probably in the wrong wavelength. Again, if that LED doesn't have a wavelength in this range, it probably won't work. It's just gonna be bright. Here's an LED unit that will work. And the reason I know it will work, it says so right there. It gives actual wavelength of the LED in here. And it says 365 to 400 nanometers. It'll work just fine. But the problem with all this is you have to put this all together into a box or whatever to make an exposure unit. It's not going to, for fluorescent lights, you might have to make that box big enough to hold your screen and you have to have more than one light. In some cases, you're going to need 10, maybe 20 of these bulbs to do an exposure unit. Not very cost effective. And this type of light, if it does give out from some UV, it depends on how close you put this bulb to your screen to expose it. A lot of guessing to go on. Sometimes you can spend a lot of money and not get what you think you're going to get out of it. Best thing is buy a professionally made exposure unit. It may cost a little more in the beginning, but it's going to save you money in the end. When in doubt, call Chromaline. They will tell you what light sources are available, what, what uh, kinds are going to work best for you, whether it be a fluorescent exposure unit or a LED or even a laser. Once you get bigger, more power, they got it. But this stuff here, remember, UV is what you're after. If you don't have those numbers, you're not going to expose a screen. That's all there is to it.